Good morning, gang. Happy Tuesday morning. Okay, so this morning was the long-awaited Putin speech that was going to change the world. Yeah. Went over like a lead balloon. It was pretty much no different than a Biden State of the Union speech. It was two hours of talking and nothing basically being said. Uh, Putin went in and... For, let's start off this way. Fortunately, nothing was said. All the worry that Putin was going to officially declare war, all the worries that Putin was going to start an offensive against other countries in Europe, some of the speculation that Putin was going to step down, none of that came true. Okay? There were teeny, teeny, teeny little tiny changes in Russia's stance, and I'll get to those in a second. Uh, good old Vlad the Week has uh, <clears throat> said he's going to continue the war, okay, in Ukraine. No big deal. They're going to push onward. Uh, he blamed the West, as you, I mean, and he's done this many times before. It's, it's the West's fault for starting this war that, you know, Ukraine, the United States, Germany, England, we started the war and they're just responding with force. Last time I checked, you don't start a war in your own country. Okay. You know, there haven't been any attacks on Russia. So, yeah. And he can say what he wants about Lugansk or Donetsk or anything like that. That ain't Russia. Okay. So, no, you're not defending your own country. I don't care how you try to spin it there, Vlad. It doesn't matter. You went into a foreign nation. Therefore, you started a war. If Ukraine was fighting against ethnic Russians in Donetsk and Lugansk, that's all fine and dandy. It was within Lugansk or within Ukraine's territory. It would be no different if the Biden administration started going after Texans. Okay. It wouldn't say Mexico can now come in and invade and say, gee, there's a bunch of Mexican nationals that live in Texas, therefore this is an attack on Mexico. No, it doesn't work that way. This was still within the borders of their country. So I don't care how he tries to spin this. Russia is the aggressor in this. Okay, And no, I'm not defending Ukraine. You know me, I don't have a horse in this race. I just want the United States out of it and let the two of them duke it out, and deal with it. And if Ukraine falls, Ukraine falls. I don't care. Uh, Putin got into talking about the effects of sanctions in saying, oh, that the Russian economy is still strong. Like I said, it's like a Biden speech saying that the U.S. economy is strong. Russia's GDP just uh, went negative 2.5% the other day. So don't tell me your economy is strong when your GDP is going down. All right. Face it, war isn't good for anybody. Maybe the defense contractors and maybe the 10% Joe's putting in his pocket, it's good for him. But for the rest of the world, no, people are waking up dead or waking up with no power or their house is burned down or there's troops in the streets, your movement's limited, you can't do whatever. War ain't good, like I said, unless you're a defense contractor or you're Joe. Right. The... Interesting parts is, and the, you had to catch this one, Putin has basically stopped Russia's participation in the New START Treaty. Okay, uh, There was another five-year extension that was signed last year where, of course, Russia and the United States limit the amount of nuclear weapons that each country is going to have. Well, Russia is now prohibiting the United States from inspecting the Russian nuclear arsenal. No different than the United States has been prohibiting Russia from inspecting our nuclear arsenal. So Russia has said that the new START treaty is dead in the water. They're suspending any participation in it, which basically means we are now at a free-for-all for countries developing nuclear weapons. 
There was no comment whatsoever on using them. So do not freak out about something like that. All right. But that was, that was the big deal, if you will. Uh, he talked a lot about building infrastructure. He talked a lot about pride and, you know, soldiers going to the, the, the front with the, with the prayers of children and everything like that. And sure, I'm going to give you this. There are certainly people in Russia who support this war. Okay. There's people in the United States who support this war too. I'm going to bet if it wasn't for the, oh my God, either say you support this war in public, otherwise you're going to jail. If that wasn't the policy in Russia right now, or that they weren't grabbing people out of the metro stations or pulling them off the streets or grabbing them out of their offices and giving them a uniform and a rifle and saying, you're going to the front. Uh, I'm betting if they didn't have a threat over them for supporting the war, you'd probably have something similar to what you've got going on in the United States, that the majority of the people do not support this. I mean, again, you have to remember, Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union for the longest time. Russians and Ukrainians are, Ukrainians are both, I mean... I can't say I can't say the same. That'd be like saying the United States and Canada are the same. We're not okay, but you're. It's literally brother versus brother is what you've got going on. There are plenty of families in Russia that are mixed Ukrainian and Russian. Okay, just saying. You know, fortunately, we didn't hear any. heightening of the tensions, if you will, any, you know, we're going to war against all of Europe, we're declaring war officially or anything like that. It's still a special military operation. Uh, he has, did not say that is ending, nothing of the sort like that. The thing is, this, this is what I'm really surprised about, is... All, I mean, to give you this, this was the, remember, you know, this was the speech that was supposed to change Russia forever. This was a highly important speech. All the members of both houses of government, the entire Duma had to show up for this speech. Every TV station and every radio station in Russia was ordered to play the speech. There were barricades that were put up around the Kremlin all over the place, okay? You figured something big was going to come out of this. This was a huge nothing burger, which is good that Putin didn't decide that the world was going into World War III. But the downside is Putin didn't say the horrors of war that are going on in Ukraine are going to end anytime soon. Nothing's changed, guys. Just keep your head on a swivel. Watch what's going on. <clears throat> Wait to see what the idiot in chief's speech is later this morning, because he's supposed to have a response to it. We'll see what happens. But we all know that Russia has said that red line is if the U.S. sends fighter jets. Because remember... <clears throat> You don't need fighter jets to patrol your own skies. You can do that with anti-aircraft. Okay? You need fighter jets to go across the border. Why does, why does Zelensky want fighter jets? That's the thing to pay attention to. There's a lot of casualties on both sides, Russia and Ukraine. <clears throat> Neither of which are needed because there is no solution to this war. Okay? We heard Joe say, We're, the United States is going to pay all the pensions of the, the Ukraines because of this war. We can't pay our own Social Security. We can't feed our own homeless. We can't give our veterans the health care they need. <clears throat> but we can pay for the pensions <clears throat> of the Ukrainian people. 
we're going to give them billions of dollars to rebuild their grid in Ukraine. Well, ours is crumbling. Okay. This is the thing. Joe wants a war. Joe wants this to keep going because Joe's getting 10%. Don't ever, if you, did, if you don't believe that, I'm telling you right now, you're wrong. Okay. I wish I could prove it to you on a piece of paper, but this war is wanted by the West. I don't even think the Ukrainians don't want the war. The Russians don't want the war. The West wants the war. But this is, this is where we're coming. There is no solution. What's going to come next? Are the Ukrainians going to go, or they already have? We want reparations. The only way there's a peace is if Russia comes and pays, pays to re rebuild all of Ukraine. <clears throat> right. That's going to happen. Let's go back to what happened with Germany paying reparations after World War I. We talk about the Weimar Republic all the time and what happened to the currency, right? Okay. Yeah. Do that to the Russian people, okay? whose economy is already teetering. Tell them that they've got to pay to rebuild Ukraine. Now, that's what will get us World War III. Pimple out.